Let us learn about viral immunity. The word immunity has different meanings in different contexts. However, in science or biology in specific, the word is used to describe many sets of activities involving many molecules with complex interactions. Immune response is inseparable from many other phenomena of our body like infection, inflammation, wound healing and of late role of immune components are found to be significant in several disease pathologies like diabetes, arterial clots and cancers. Without knowing the various cells and molecules of immunity, immune response to viruses is difficult to decipher. So let's start with an overview of immunology with the caveat that any rigid statement in immunology has exceptions hence should not be contested for its absolute accuracy. Innate immunity is non-specific generalized response to any antigen whereas acquired immunity is a specific response to a specific antigen which is usually long-lasting. Memorizing each immunological and inflammatory cascade is impossible and hence Let's try to understand the components and responses in groups. There are cells like leukocytes which are involved in immune responses and there are molecules like cytokines, chemokines, etc. involved. In acquired immunity response, the cells involved are T and B lymphocytes. However, the term cell-mediated immune response does not apply to all the cells but only to T lymphocytes in acquired immunity. Response of B lymphocytes is termed humoral. Let's remember the cells in sets for easy recall. Neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils and monocytes are the part of differential cells you ask for in a routine blood test. They belong to same lineage of myeloid tissue. The monocytes, when enter the tissue, gets transformed into macrophages which literally means big eaters. They may be named differently when they are in different tissues. Kuffer cells of liver, microglia in the brain, osteoclasts in the bone are to name a few. These cells are primarily involved in innate immunity. However, to reiterate again, all cells ultimately participate in all immune responses. Dendritic cells are other cells which belong to this lineage. Dendritic cells are present in our tissues, especially on our skin and are called Langerhans cells. Their primary function is to catch the antigen and present it to lymphocytes to kill. Recalling again, neutrophil, basophil, eosinophil and monocytes are the cells we deal with regularly in lab tests. In addition, remember that macrophages which are modified monocytes and dendritic cells also belong to this group. The second set to remember is lymphocytes. Acquired immunity starts only through lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are said to induce humoral immunity because it involves substances that are present in bodily fluids which are called humor in Latin. They can identify an antigen before it starts attacking the cells. If you ever hear about plasma cells, they are nothing but activated B lymphocytes. They change their structure and are now ready to combat. T lymphocytes are responsible for cell mediated immunity. They identify infected cells, attack them and kill them. T lymphocytes can also remember the antigen they faced earlier, which could be from a tumor or from a virus. They are often called antigen experienced T cells or memory T cells. The additional cell you need to remember from this lineage is a natural killer cell. Natural killers are like security screening at entry to airports or any other sensitive places. They keep frisking the cells and look for the defects. The moment they find defects, they immediately attack them. To summate, the first line of defense from external invaders are the skin and mucous membrane. When they are breached, dendritic cells in the skin and natural killers in circulation are the first attackers. They will be quickly joined by phagocytic macrophages in defense. 
Neutrophils can also be rapidly deployed who secrete enzymes to dissolve the membranes of microbes and dissolve them. For an analogy, you can consider natural killers as quick thinking, irresponsible attackers who can leave debris of microbes in circulation. Dendritic cells on the other hand are responsible cells because they present the microbes to lymphocytes which then take them to lymph and process their cells and secrete them out. Neutrophils are the armed forces with heavy artillery who come and join the battle. Monocytes are responsible again and engulf the microbes and present them to lymphocytes. So there are few steps involved here. Recognizing the invader, killing the invader, presenting the invaders to the cytotoxic T cells and eating the microbes and clearing the debris. There are specialists for each of these functions. One common term you will hear in immunology is APC or antigen presenting cells. Dendritic cells, monocytes and B lymphocytes are antigen presenting cells which catch the antigen on a micro and present it to cytotoxic lymphocytes or T lymphocytes who process the antigen and throws it out. Basophils resemble mast cells but are different in origin. Basophils are highly granulated and can induce heavy load of histamines leading to acute inflammation and anaphylaxis. Eosinophils are useful against nematodes or commonly known as intestinal helminths or worms. Eosinophils can also be involved in respiratory allergic reactions. Both basophils and eosinophils and their actions are still poorly understood. So let's talk a little bit about recognizing the non-self. All nucleated cells in our body have MHC1 or major histocompatibility complex 1 and they are expressed on the cell surface with an antigen. If a virus infects the cell, the unique protein of that virus is called antigen. This is brought to the cell surface of the infected cell and presented to the line of defense. Cytotoxic lymphocytes are also called CD8 lymphocytes who will recognize this antigen on the surface of the cells and kill that cell through the cytotoxic chemicals they possess. Sometimes smart viruses do not let the MHC1 to be expressed on the surface. The natural killer cells step in here. They realize that there are fewer than normal MHC1 on the cell surface and hence something should be wrong. They immediately swing into action and kill the cells. Innate immunity means non-specific immunity against any invading pathogen, which is quickly deployed by all the cells we talked about. Acquired immunity is purely mediated by lymphocytes, for example by vaccination. B cells get activated with the memory to that antigen on the pathogen and get deployed when the infection happens next. If we have not had previous exposure or if we are not vaccinated, innate immune responses need to save us from viruses. Most of the viruses are self-limiting and hence we survive their assault. To understand the antiviral response to a virus, we need to understand non-cellular parts of the immune system. As we already learnt, inflammatory cells and immune cells work in tandem to fight the viruses. Inflammatory responses increase vascularity, enable higher permeability and make cells reach the infected areas. They also help in many other ways. Few names are worth remembering, for example interleukins. These are cytokines which get activated and activate a cascade of proteins. Interleukins are shortly called IL with numbers. If this response is abnormal, it can lead to disease as in rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, etc. or kill a patient as in COVID-19 when it is exaggerated. Interleukin 6, for example, is called IL-6 which is the center of most of the acute inflammatory responses. Interleukin 6 induced cytokine storm is what you are hearing in current corona pandemic. This exaggerated response can kill the patients. Interferons are very important proteins which we should know about. Interferons plunge into action as soon as the viruses infect the cell. They ensure that 
The viral antigen gets presented on the cell surface for lymphocytes to kill the cell. They also give signals to the neighboring cells and stop viral replication. Thus, they play a very important role in combating viruses. Once viruses infect our body, our body develops antibodies for the response for future attacks. The IgG test you hear is used to detect these antibodies. Antibodies attack the viruses before they infect the cells. Antibodies can bind to viruses and make them unable to infect. They can make several viral particles stick to each other through a process called agglutination and the whole viral clump or complex can be engulfed or said to be phagocytosed. Lastly, a part of inflammatory system of the human body is called complement system. They include several proteins called chemokines named with numbers like C1, C2, C3, C4, etc. Chemokines can opsonize the viruses which is a mechanism similar to phagocytosis. Certain inadequacies in the complement system are said to hinder our resistance against viruses like influenza. Immunology is a subject which involves number one, adaptive immunity through natural exposure or vaccination, number two, innate immunity which is generalized to any invading pathogen, number three, infection specific immune response that is how body reacts to viruses, bacteria or mycobacteria like tuberculosis. Number four, immunodeficiencies. Number five, allergic immune response where there is exaggerated immune response. Number six, anaphylaxis involving basophils. Number seven, autoimmunity which means misdirected immune response to our own cells. Number eight, cancer immunology where certain immune checkpoints can be unleashed to kill cancer cells. Number nine, developmental immunology, which includes genetics. And lastly, number 10, transplant immunology that involves graft versus host rejection. There cannot be one drug for all of them. Each disease needs to be treated differently. While improved function of cytotoxic T cells is desirable in COVID disease, immune suppression is what is being attempted in cytokine storm. Atrimid works extensively on immune responses and immunomodulators. Psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, skin allergies, nasal allergies, bronchial asthma and general immunity towards infection are the areas we work with. A careful understanding of the Ayurvedic treatments with understanding of molecular mechanisms will provide definitive results. However, that requires extensive knowledge and precise understanding of dosage and duration of treatments. Thank you.